Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Jackie. I am a photographer based in Boston. I specialize in portraits and I guess specifically self-portraits recently. And as popularly requested in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this picture. So for this picture, I used my camera, duh. This RGB video light, it's from Bowling, and I will link this below so you can see, find the exact one if you're interested in it. It's definitely helped me uh, in quite a few situations, especially if I'm lacking lighting or if I just wanna use light as an element in my photo. I of course, have the book. This is the book that I used. I just took the cover off so that way I had a nice plain book. It's a tiny little emblem right there, but you couldn't really see it in the picture, so. This is what I use that. And then of course, a tripod. This is an Amazon Basics tripod. It's like $17. I know so many photographers absolutely despise this tripod. For me, it's just super easy and lightweight for me to run outside or just quickly set it up in my room. This is kind of my go-to tripod for those. Um, I definitely would not recommend this if you need something sturdy because this is kind of lightweight. My camera has almost tipped over a few times outside of my backyard if it's been windy or just kind of an uneven, setting that I was on, but otherwise, honestly, this is just a super easy go-to. Like if I need a lightweight, gotta grab it quickly. You know, very lightweight right here. <laughs> okay, now for the editing. The first thing I do when I edit a photo is I open it in camera raw and I make some basic adjustments to the lighting. I just try to even out those highlights and shadows. You can also play with the temperature here and any, any of these lighters really, you can adjust as you desire, whatever you like, your preferences, it's up to you. You don't have to touch it at all. I just go in and I try to even out the light a little bit for my base photo before I open it up in Photoshop. And the nice thing about this is you can easily toggle back and forth between your before photo and your after photo to see what changes you've made. Once I open it in Photoshop, the first thing I do for my portraits is a little bit of frequency separation. I have an action saved in my Photoshop, so I'm not going to go in depth on frequency separation for this tutorial. But for this photo, I just did a little bit. I tried to kind of decrease the shadows on my face a little bit just because I didn't want that to distract from the photo. But because this isn't a close up headshot, I didn't go crazy. So what I did next was I wanted to clean up the tree line behind my head because I thought that tree on the right side was a little distracting. So I created a flattened copy of this entire document so far by using the shortcut Command Option Shift E at the same time, which creates a composite of all the visible layers as a new layer on top. And then I used the selection tool to just select the area that I wanted to start removing and use Content Aware. Um, sometimes it works really great, sometimes it looks a little funky, um, you just kind of have to play around a little bit. That worked pretty well. And then I just merged those layers, create a new layer copy because I just like to make as many layer copies as possible so I can easily go back and undo something um, without having to undo everything. But this section right here gave me a little bit of trouble so I had to finagle this a little bit and try that again. Um, it worked okay, but I still want to clean that up a little bit more. So let's merge these layers and try that again. And just make a selection here. Oh my god, what was that? That was Jackie having too much coffee. I'm gonna try that again. That was a messy selection. All right, let's... Let's do this again. Go to edit, content aware fill. That looks, that looks pretty decent. That looks better than before. Let's go with that. Thank you. 
All right, so next I want to replace the sky because I feel like I want something a little more magical. So I'm going to use the sky replacement tool. I haven't used this too often. Honestly, I think this is the first time I've, I've truly really used it. So I really just played around a lot in this sky replacement tool here, just playing around with all these different sliders, trying to make it look as realistic as possible. Obviously, like this is a fake sky. The sky was very cloudy when I took this photo, just bright white clouds. Um, so I just played around with these sliders until I was as satisfied as I could be with this. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy for this tutorial just because I already edited this photo and I cannot replicate it no matter how many times I try. All right, so after I hit OK and selected those adjustments, I went down into these layers here. So if you look at the foreground lighting and the sky layers, you see those have layer masks. Um, so what I did here was I just grabbed the brush tool and I just painted a little bit more over these two layers to try to make them blend a little bit better. I still am not super satisfied um, with how this is blending, but again, I'm just, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna go super crazy on it, uh, but this is basically what I did for the first edit of this photo. I just did a lot, a lot of finagling with the different settings to get it right. Now, the next thing I did to try to make the sky look a little more realistic was I added a Gaussian blur filter to the sky layer because as you can see right now, those stars are pretty, pretty in focus. And obviously the sky is very blurred. The background is very blurred in this photo. So I'm gonna just play around with this Gaussian blur filter to see if I can make this look a little more realistic and match the background and you can play with the intensity obviously super intense is gonna get rid of all of the detail don't want that and just finagle until you find something that you think looks good I also kind of thought this bright star right here was just a little distracting. It was super bright and just kind of out of nowhere. So I used the clone stamp and got rid of that and just kind of tried to make that blend as well as possible. I think that looks good. All right, now it's time for the fun color grading. I used a color lookup table for this. I went with the Aspen. Um, I will link these below, the ones that I have here that don't come natively with Photoshop. Um, and I just lowered the intensity because I don't want to use it at 100%. And then I use a selective color layer to just play around with you know, the different specific colors and just adjust those even more. For this photo, obviously this is a more conceptual photo. I wanted the colors to be a little more dreamlike and kind of magical. So obviously I'm gonna make these greens look a little more blue and a little less how they did in real life. Um, but I think that's fun to do when I just play around with all these different colors. And honestly, I could spend hours, but I'm not gonna do that here because I did already edit this photo once. So I'm just gonna try to keep it as close to how I edited this the first time around. And then for the magic dust, I cannot for the life of me find the photo that I used for this original one. So I'm pulling it from the original edit. But what I did was I found a photo with magic dust on a black background. I loaded that photo into this Photoshop uh, file, I put it on screen, and then I just tried to 
um, I put a layer mask on and I just got rid of any areas that stuck out and didn't look good and just tried to blend it as best as I could. Um, I put it down to 80% and then I duplicated the layer to make it a little more intense. I probably could have just kept it at 100%, but uh, that's just that's just what I did. <laughs> and then the next step is to add a curves layer. I just feel like sometimes this brings all the elements together and blends them even more and just kind of adds another little pop to your photo. So this is the first curves layer that I did and I just kind of play around with the different points that I put in, just find something that I like. Sometimes I do this multiple times and I just, I toggle back and forth quite a bit to see how it looks from the original image. And then I still feel like the background is a little too bright. So I'm gonna bring down the highlights and then I'm gonna mask that out. Well, I'm gonna mask my face out and just bring the brightness back up to my face. but. I'm gonna use a low flow so it's not super intense. And just kind of emphasize the light coming from the book. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm still gonna lower the opacity here just because I don't want that super, super drastic. All right, so now I just group all of my layers together and look at the before and after again. And here we go, voila. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button, please. And stay tuned for my upcoming videos.